How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I am here to teach you how to do the one thing that you have all been waiting for on this channel. Now, in case you guys are not aware, a little while ago, I actually had a series where I talked about and I went in depth on how to defeat every single dungeon in Dungeon Quest. I only made it to Pirate Island, and I think you guys are awaiting the King's Castle episode. However, I do want to take a bit of a detour and actually cover the most recent dungeon in Dungeon Quest. Now, it would obviously make sense for me to go through the entire series, and if you guys like those videos, I, I can finish them, but I think it'd be more helpful for me to give you guys a tutorial on how to defeat Aquatic Temple, the newest dungeon in Dungeon Quest. Yeah, I know, like, you think, oh, okay, well, we just came from a lava, lava dungeon, you know, this would probably be easy, you know, just like, we'd probably melt all the water monsters, and it'd be super easy. The problem is, the monsters you encounter in Aquatic Temple aren't like sea creatures, like, you aren't fighting, like, sharks, or, like, even sea serpents or anything like that. No, this is based off of the Disney Atlantis movies. Uh, you'll see it eventually later in this video. But before we get into this video, if you guys liked this video, make sure to drop a like on it, comment what your favorite part of the video was, and subscribe if this video is helpful. And make sure to subscribe with the notifications turned on because I will be posting more content similar to this and also other content. And I also want to tell you guys about the fact that I stream over on Twitch weekly. I've been playing a lot of Valorant over there, but actually as of this video, I actually recently just got done with a Dungeon Quest stream where I actually was farming not only Aquatic Temple, but I was also farming some Volcanic Chambers Nightmare Hardcore because I, I kind of want to get my hands a hold of another Enhanced Inner Rage or Enhanced Inner Focus. It didn't happen, of course, but it still nonetheless was a good thought and lots of people also did join and chill with me and if you guys want to do the same you guys are welcome to just make sure to follow the link in the description get follow get notified about when i stream next and i hope to see you guys there in a future video or even in a future stream or even in game all right so i said that this was based off of the disney atlantis movies if you've never seen them i think i can now nah, you know i'd probably be best if i did not pull a picture up on screen now but however you'll see what the dungeon looks like here momentarily However, in this dungeon, there are six kinds of enemies. If y'all thought that Volcanic Chambers was hard, wait till you complete this dungeon. This dungeon, I will admit when I first got onto it, was actually pretty tough to dodge and all that stuff. And who am I kidding? No, I, I'm the Dodge King at Aquatic Temple. This dungeon's easy. But in all seriousness though, it is actually pretty tricky if you don't know what you're doing. What you're gonna wanna do is for this dungeon, I would recommend having about 10 players, especially if you're just getting into this dungeon. Of course, naturally, if you're like me and you have Triton armor and a legendary, it's not gonna be that hard. You probably can actually skip on the tank, but I would recommend you have 10 players. Seven DPS, two healers, and one tank. When you first get into this dungeon, you are going to want to prioritize dodging and staying alive more than anything else. This goes for every single dungeon. All right, that is all the pre-dungeon information that I can give you. Uh, maybe a couple of minor things like purple Lava King's warrior mage guardian armor would be very helpful, but you can actually do it with green or blue or even probably even gray if you're skilled enough. But I would definitely recommend you at least have either Inner Rage, Inner Focus, or Enhanced Inner Rage and Enhanced Inner Focus. You don't necessarily need the Enhanced versions, but they do actually help out a little bit. That 10% actually does more than what you think it does. Plus, it's a speed boost, which you are going to need in this dungeon. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right on into the dungeon, and let's learn together how to defeat the hardest dungeon in the game, Aquatic Temple. All right, here we are in the Dungeon Aquatic Temple. Get a good look around at this dungeon and you will know what I mean by Disney's Atlantis movies. Like, look at this. How cool is this, bro? It's so freaking cool, dude. Like, legit. It reminds me of the, um, not only the Disney Atlantis movies, but it also reminds me of the Atlantis levels in areas from the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Odyssey game, and it's honestly super cool. Okay, so when you first start off, I would recommend having the tanks go out front, aggro the enemies, and just stay behind them at all times. Just remember, the enemies, you can see up, up ahead, there's a couple of spirits there and a couple of pylons. Those guys you're gonna watch out for because they are very, very dangerous and they will mill your health down like crazy. 
So we have one healer and three DPS on us. So this is gonna be pretty fun. I'm just gonna say starting real quick. And yes, so I would recommend having the DPS and the healers all behind the tank while as you push in. We're probably not gonna do this. Although technically we don't have a tank per se. We only have a couple of DPS and a healer. And honestly, that's all you really need. So we're not gonna play on hardcore for this time because frankly, I might die a couple of times, even though I actually, believe it or not, rarely die on this dungeon. This is very different from when I played Volcanic back uh, a while ago. In fact, on Volcanic, I died all the time. But as you can see, the first boss is like right after like the first three groups of enemies. So this guy is known as the Temple Core Generator. What you are going to want to do and what all the attacks this guy has is he has, you probably just saw them right there. He has the orbs attack. He has the wall square, the floor square attack. And then he has the swing attack, I guess we call it. The orb attack and the, and the swing attack are all basically purely RNG based on where they're going to spawn. So honestly, the only way to really dodge them is to just have an open mind on where they're going to spawn. The floor square attack really is not that big of a deal. You just, it's all about really positioning on where you're going to be going. But after you beat that, get ready to fight a lot of mobs because the second boss is towards the end and is actually like right before the third boss. So it's basically going to be one boss right at the beginning of the dungeon, a massive group of enemies, and then just a bunch of bosses towards the end. So as for the tanks, a little bit of strategy for the tanks. If you're watching this and you are the tank in a group, I would highly advise that you actually have the tank not only in the front, but also only truly worry about the guardians and the spirits because you are not going to be tanking and aggroing the um, the pylons. Those guys really cannot be aggroed at all. However, you can, however, aggro the spirits and the guardians right here. So this is what I mean by that the guardians and the spirits are actually a threat. You can look at the attack and you can see how it's kind of a wave attack almost for the spirits. And honestly, these guys are pretty easy to dodge if you know where you're positioned, but it's the guardians because they can actually strike twice. Now, if you know how to dodge in volcanic chambers and you know how to dodge the aggressive lava walkers, you can actually dodge them in a similar fashion. Okay, so this part right here, let me just say, wait real quick. Let me explain something real quick. So this boss right here, you need to be extremely careful. In fact, if you have a group, I would recommend telling them to, I would actually recommend having a blacklist feature on this, this boss specifically, because this guy has an insta-kill attack, okay? And the thing is, if you don't group up your group, which is what I recommend you do, you group up your group right about here, and you wait for them to all get together. Once you all get together, you then push in as a team. Once you do that, you just get close. Obviously, the insta-kill attack isn't right off the bat. It's actually the third attack, the third cycle attack. So you're going to push in and just look at the patterns. Okay, they're coming in. It's a um, it's a sunburst attack and then a area attack. But this is the insta-kill attack that you seriously need to watch out for right here. If you look, he actually hits the ground and this will actually cycle three times. If you're not if you actually pay attention to how this works, I'm probably going to die here. You look, it actually is, it starts spreading out after it concusses. So like, if you, the only way really to dodge this attack is by getting close to the boss and actually milling his health down from there. Once you beat that boss, it's super easy to fight. Like lots of people say that he needs nerfs, but honestly, he, he's pretty easy. That's the only thing that really is a threat. He also has a second attack that is kind of like a, kind of similar to the Deity of the Volcano's um, rock attack, except the thing is that one, you just need to do some simple um, eyeballing and you will be able to dodge the attacks just super easy. It's a grid attack that is actually pretty easy to dodge. So once you beat the second boss, you're then gonna be on this corridor here. This set of steps right here is your final ascent to the final boss. Once you defeat these three groups of enemies, there's three groups, there's one towards the second boss, one in the center, and then one up towards the steps, which by the way, these guys are nothing but temple guardians. Then you will be done and you will be fighting with the second, the final boss of the dungeon, and that is the Sea King. So the Sea King has a couple of attacks. He has a splash attack that actually kind of spreads out. So we can call that, a, I guess we can call that a cluster attack. However, if you actually look at my character real quick, you can actually see, oh my gosh, my damage. You can actually see that there is like an aura on my character right here. And that is because that is actually a target. That's basically painting a target on your back. 
So I just I just cured it. The only way to actually get rid of it is by coming over to these green circles and actually um, stepping inside of them. That is very similar to the uh, warrior overlords from the canals, and it is super easy to dodge if you know how to do it. So the thing is, you don't necessarily need to worry about it too much if your team is like really beefed out with equipment. But the thing is, you might want to be careful if it's actually like a newbie group. Okay, I got some pretty good stuff from that run. But other than that, after you beat the boss, you obviously have the uh, concussion attacks, which uh, they kind of phase in and out, and it's kind of hard to see. But other than that, it's pretty easy to fight the dungeon and complete the dungeon. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, once you have defeated the Sea King and quelled his armies from the temple, you have officially completed Aquatic Temple, the hardest dungeon in the game so far. And before we, before we end today's video, I do actually want to give you guys a couple of tips and tricks for being able to defeat this dungeon. First of all, put together a team that knows what they're doing. It sounds terrible, and it sounds like being, sounds like I'm being stingy, and I'm kind of saying that no, saying that noobs should not be playing this dungeon. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying, however, is that if it's your first time playing through the dungeon, there's nothing wrong with saying to some other people and telling them that, hey, I want to actually you know, level up a little bit more before I actually, like, do, you know, like, open raids. In fact, I didn't do open raids on my streams until about my second stream, and then I opened up to Insane. But the thing is, what I've noticed with Dungeon Quest is that once you beat the first, once you beat the dungeon for the first time, you're good. The first dungeon is, you. the first day of a dungeon's release is usually done to learn the new dungeon. It's the second day that usually is when the victories and everything like that starts happening failure is okay and in fact that's my second point for you guys failure is okay don't get overwhelmed it is okay guys remember it is just a game i i know your parents probably tell you that all the time your friends tell you that other people tell you that but it's okay but anyways ladies and gentlemen that's gonna about wrap it up for today's video if you remember guys if you like this video make sure to drop a like on it comment what your favorite part of the video was and subscribe for more content similar to this because i've got a bunch more content coming up for you guys and also don't forget about the fact that i stream over on twitch weekly i have been playing games such as valorant i've been playing i as i said uh twice now i stream dungeon quest as of the recording of this video uh the night actually that i filmed this video so if you guys want to make sure to Follow the link in the description, get followed, get notified about when I stream next, and I hope to see you guys in a future stream or a future video. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end. Thanks for watching, and remember my salty crew, don't get salty, you.